Hey guys, it's Sonny Rush, and today we're going to be looking at a replay that I, that I had in the Type 64. So we're on the map Fisherman's Bay, it's a standard game. What I like to do on Fisherman's Bay the second I start off is I like to scout to see who which heavies are going city. Now, the route I take to scout this location is pretty simple. What I do is I make sure I knock this tree over, and then I knock this house over. That's going to be sufficient eyes on whoever's going into the city, and then also knocking this tree over allows me to use this it as a bush for cover so what you're going to want to do on this map is if you're in a light tank make sure you knock over that tree in a direction so it protects you from anyone in the city and you can see i'm basically just going to use it very effectively to shoot at any heavies who go into the city now what i like to do at the start of any game is analyze the enemy team lineups and what i would expect is i'd expect for the e75 type 4 heavy all their tier 8 heavies except the 5100s etc to be into in the city so i'm preparing for that what i'd also expect is i'd expect for the 5100s to be over there so what you're going to notice is i'm going to be hugging this house here but i'm not really going to push away from it because i really expect for them to have a decently skilled 5100 driver who's just going to be right waiting right there to clip me out so Right now there's a 1390 in front of me, a bit of an odd spot for light tank to go, but what I can do right here is I can take advantage of the fact that the 1390's gun blooms a lot. So whenever he shoots, his gun gets, his aimer gets massive. And I, basically I know he's not going to be very uh, good at hitting me reliably, so he's not really going to hit me, especially if I'm moving back and forth and there's an M4190 GF who's making him move his gun around and stuff, so... Just basically, what you can do is you can use the enemy's tank to your advantage. I know his weakness, so pretty easy to just use that to my advantage. Now, what I'm noticing is both the 5100s are spotted. So you have a 5100 at D1 who's been lit, and a 5100 at uh, C8. So what I'm doing is I'm moving up, because there's really nothing that I'm super worried about in the middle. There's an M41 Grand Final who is swatted at E3 who might be a threat to me, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch my minimap while I shoot at these guys. That's going to be the best chance of noticing anyone who's coming to threaten me. Now, from this position, what you can do is you can shoot at everyone without being seen. These bushes are solid for me, so that makes means it's going to be very difficult for them to spot me. It's still possible for them to spot me, however, it's going to be almost impossible, so... Just keep that in mind. Bushes aren't 100% reliable. They are oh, sort of reliable, but uh, you sometimes you can make them work, and bushes have different camel values. There isn't a static camel value for every bush in the game. So you can see I'm picking apart that 5100 there, and what I'm noticing is that they've actually sent quite a few tanks to the one line. There's an IS-6, so I'm just going to put a shot into, and he dies. And I'm sort of noticing that, huh, it seems like a lot of their tanks aren't lit. But they also don't, well, they're not lit, and some of their heavies are on the one line. And what I'm noticing is, okay, their Jag isn't lit, and their E-75 isn't lit yet. So what I'm thinking of doing is I'm thinking of getting into the city. Um, and what I could do is I could push around like this, right? Like I could go in front of this house and try to push around. And eventually you're going to see me just not do that because they've got a Yag Tiger who's unspotted. You can see I just spotted the E75. He's over there. And that makes me think, okay, the Yag Tiger is really likely just to be camping B2 as well. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just looking for shots. I'm not going to find any. And because of that E75 being lit and because I don't know where the Yag Tiger is, I'm going to push up through this middle road. That's a lot safer. For all I know, the Yag Tiger could be just some guy who shoots HE, you know, because it always does damage. And this thing's a one shot for high explosive very, very easily. So you just want to keep that in mind. Light tanks require a lot of situational awareness. You'll notice how big my map size is. Now, I will generally play the game with my map this big because it makes it easier, a lot easier to just glance at and you can tell where the enemy is. For example, right now I know they're pushing the one line, so I'm on voice comms with the platoon saying, okay, we need to push the city because if we don't push the city, what's going to happen is these guys might win and then come around and flank us, and obviously you don't want that to happen. So what I do is I go after the M4190GF, Hesh, who is target son, who I'm also platooning with, um, was a one shot. So I really needed to save him. And what I'm going to do right now is because we've won the 9-0 the area of this map, we've also won the middle. And what the middle will allow you to do is it allows you to defend the one line very, very effectively. It also allows you to push into B2 if they have any campers over there. Right now, I'm assuming the Yag Tiger's camping B2. You can see I just see I just pinged it on the map. We we're talking about it in TeamSpeak, um, but it, it appears I was wrong. But that's normally what you can expect. If someone's unlit at this point in the game, they're gonna be at B2, C1, B1 area, like over there. 
So the Ag Tiger gets lit, but I'm putting shots into this T-34. What you're going to notice is I'm going to aim for his engine pretty soon. The idea here is just to go for fires. If I can light him on fire, that would be outstanding. So you can see, there we go, we light him on fire. Looks like he burns an auto repair, auto fire extinguisher. Gonna continue to go for his engine because he's down a fire extinguisher. If I can kill him by burning him, that'd be sweet. What I'm also noticing right now is I'm starting to run out of ammo. I'm down to 10 shells. I've got one AP shell left and the rest are gold. I've fired very little gold rounds all the all game. So yeah, at this point, I'm sort of like thinking, hmm, should I uh, not shoot anymore because I want to make a profit? I was grinding these for credits. You can see we're all in prem tank. So I was thinking, hmm, maybe I shouldn't be shooting. Maybe I should. But I sort of decide, I'll just go for damage, who cares? This is an outstanding game already, might as well make it good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push up. You can see I'm going to get spotted about now. The Yag Tiger, well, I was already, yeah, okay, I'm lit. The Yag Tiger is a TD, so he's not going to be able to point his turret at me, and that's going to make him the easiest target for me. So I'm going to go after him first. And what you can see me doing is I'm using the Yag Tiger for cover. The E75 doesn't have a line of fire on me because of where the Yag Tiger is. You can really use this to your advantage if you're in light tanks or medium tanks, really anything. I'd say it's one of the most important tactics to use. It's just sort of looking at the situation and making cover out of it. We're down to two shells. I put one into the E75. And now what's going to happen is I'm just going to sort of bait him, try to get his turret turned, and make him an easy target for everyone else on my team. Now, what you can see him doing is he is pointing his gun at me. However, I don't want to get shot. Just in case he has loaded HE, again, that would really suck if he one-shot me. So what's going to happen is he's going to start pushing into me. Um, I'm just trying to move back and forth so he doesn't put a shot into me. He starts to move up onto this bridge here. That's going to be a mistake because he's giving these IS-6s a really good shot onto him. So one of our pl my platoon mates puts a shot into him and I'm able to get the kill. So hopefully this uh, replay was helpful. What you're going to find on this map is that you really want to win the city. What the city allows you to do is it allows you to win the middle of the map. And as you can see, I just basically totally annihilated that T-34. What you can also do, like this isn't the normal game. What can sometimes happen is their whole team will just camp back at B2. The middle also gives you an advantage for that. Especially if you're in a light tank, you want to live until the end of the game. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to spot the people back here. But from the middle, if your team controls the middle, you're able to very easily put these guys in a crossfire because you can have people up here and you can have someone here and suddenly the TDs camping back there have nothing to do. So um, yeah, let's just take a very quick look at the post game stats. Alrighty, so as you can see, that was a mastery badge, 6,249 experience on the double, 90,000 credits earned. We ended up getting a Orlix medal, which destroy three or more enemy tanks or tank destroyers with a light tank, okay, that are two tiers higher than the player's tank, okay, as well as the Faden's medal. So what that means is basically you get uh, the last shell kills the last enemy tank, and that's obviously what I did. So in the end, we did 3887 damage, four kills, 1800 base XP. So I believe with the premium account, like, <laughs> I don't have a calculator, but that's 3125 experience just off the top of my head. So with a premium account, pretty good game. It might actually be the best game I've ever played, but uh, yeah, I'll have to check. 